Trainer's Creations. This is episode 183. If you haven't already, I say this every week, but if I ha if you haven't already, please click the little red subscribe button down below. And if you click the little bell icon next to it, that will let you know anytime I post a video, which is always Saturdays and Wednesdays and sometimes extra on top of that. So let's jump in and get started right away. I have a finished object, but it's not knitting or crochet related. I finished my diamond dart. There it is. This is the second in a series. I bought, um, it was a series of four. There was um, summer, spring, winter, and fall. And so this is the spring one, which I really like because it's got cherry blossoms and a little bridge and it's just pretty. So this is the spring, and I've done the fall one. And so my next one will be winter or summer. You all tell me down below in the comments which one you want me to do next. Should I do the winter or the summer one? So there it is. I'll get this up close so you can see it. And diamond art, um, it's a lot like finger, or not finger painting, <laughs> finger painting, no. It's a lot like paint by number, except you use these little beads. And the canvas, you know, that's what this is. The canvas is, um, it's a vinyl and there's an adhesive to it. And they have a little key, which you'll see right here. And it tells you what number um and what what like little code goes for it so underneath all of these little beads are the little codes uh you get a whole package i think this one came with 20 usually they're 20 yeah 20 different colors of beads and they're all individually packaged with numbers on them and then you just follow the little number sign um like one through nine is just by the number and then like when you get to the letter or to the number 10, it's anything with the symbol of M. 11 is the symbol of A, you know, that type of thing. So they're all color coded. So it's pretty easy to do, but it's a lot of fun. Um, I tend to do it when I'm talking on the phone with my daughter or my mom. I tend to sit this at the kitchen table and I also work on it like when I'm waiting for things to cook in, on the stove and I don't want to walk away too far. I sit this on the kitchen table and just pick at it a little bit at a time. So here I have a finished one. This is the total I've made four so far. I made one that's a tree that's all different. It's like a rainbow tree. It has all different colors of like color paint splotches all over. It's pretty. So anyway, um, yeah, I've done that one. I did one that I gave to my granddaughter um, for her room because it had it was pinks and it had some pink flowers and a vase and a teacup on it and she likes to collect teacups so I gave that one to her and then I've made the two seasonal ones and then my mother gave me two more with like blue butterflies on it um, that I have yet to do but she gave me those for Christmas so that's my finished object now we will start on to my works in progress. I've gotten a lot done on all of my projects this week, so I'm really excited. My first is my crocheted blanket. And here's where I was last week, was right here. So I am up to here now, and this is, it's slightly wider than my other um, scrappy blanket by maybe maybe three inches wider. So all total, I think this is 31, 31, 32 inches across. And it's almost completely square. It's, a, it's slightly more than square right now. I am on my last ball of scrappy yarn. I do have more yarn that I could use if I had to, but I'm hoping that I can finish this up. And you can see all the different color layers in there where I've just tied all of my scraps together and I just worked my way through them. And um, I'm hoping when I finish this that it will be big enough. I think we're going to call it done. When I finish this, it's going to be done. Um, because I don't want it to get overly heavy. And this is so much, this is like twice the weight of my other 
scrappy blanket, which is done in knitting because, of course, crochet is heavier and thicker. So, um, because it's got more texture to it. So, I've been working on that. So, my next one is my Find Your Fade. And I am real pleased with how it's coming along. Here is the beginning. And then it goes across. And this is the last color I've been working on, which is black. And there you can see it up close. And you can see where I was last week. Um, yeah, right here. Right there. So I've gone quite a ways up. I'm now into a solid black section. And then it has another repeat of this kind of lacy eyelet section right here. So let me hold this up so you can see it a little slower this time. And all this curliness will block out once I block it. And I'm very pleasantly surprised. This is very, very soft. Okay, this yarn I got off of eBay. Now this is lace weight, so I'm holding two skeins of it together. It is so soft. It's a bamboo cotton blend. Um, so I don't know. I don't know all of what's in it because I can't read Chinese, but it's just extremely soft, um, and it has my hair attached to it, as does pretty much everything. It's a wonder I'm not bald, and I've got my hair pulled up today because it is kind of rainy out, and with curly hair, my, my hair turns into a giant frizz ball, and yeah, and it's all staticky, so I've just got it pulled up today, and my husband teases me. When I, when I wear my hair up kind of clipped up like this, and I'm knitting, he said I look like the grandma on Tweety Bird. Not nice, but anyway, it's, it is true. But and I've got the glasses, the knitting, the hair, the gray hair, and the bun. Yes, grandma's Tweety Bird. But anyway, um, the thing I started to say I'm pleasantly surprised with is with this, I was, I was dreading knitting this part because I'm holding two strands of yarn together, which can be challenging enough. It's lace weight. I'm holding it together so it's a fingering weight. Um, it's also black, okay? Um, dark colors can be hard to knit or crochet because you really can't see the stitches. And the only part I've had problems with this, I was really thinking this is going to do like a number on my eyes. The worst part I have found, I had to rip back two rows because I kept coming out with the count being wrong. Then I discovered I was reading the pattern wrong. I had jumped ahead and I was reading the wrong row and I was right to begin with. So anyway, um, yeah, ripped out and I didn't need to. But um, that's the only time I've found a problem is if, I, if I've only grabbed uh, like one of the strands instead of two, trying to rip back the yarn, that was a little challenging. Um, and in the, in the result of doing the ripping back, I dropped a stitch and had to go back and pull it back up through. That was a little bit difficult just because it's dark and it's very hard to see. And then you're dealing with trying to reweave it through two strands per row instead of one strand. But other than that, it's been fine. And um, yes, I'm liking it. And I like this the way this is turning out so far. And I'm now at a unique part of the pattern. Um, up until now, this is the spine, which is the center portion. And you can see it goes into a V shape. And it has stayed directly in the center. But at this part of the pattern is when it starts to veer off and the, the pattern becomes asymmetrical. It uh, stays the same width. It's a 233 stitches all the way across at this point. But this center section moves um, as you go. So I am at that point. So we're getting there, and I'm probably about halfway, well, a little more than halfway through. So this shawl is not going to turn into the giant tent that the other one that I tried to make was. So anyway, that is my Find Your Fade. It is by uh, Andrea Mallory, and you can find her stuff over at Drea Renee Knits, I think is her website. My next project is my capelet, and this is the seashell capelet. And it is a knit crate pattern from February. February or March? March. I believe it's March. And I've gotten a good ways on it as well. Let me find where I was at last week so I can show you. Here is 
here is where I was last week. So it doesn't look like I've done that much. I've gone one, two, three, four rows, but it's all the way around me, which is a vast amount. So here it is all together. And it just, it gets worn like this, and then it just comes down to like about elbow level, slightly below your elbow. But here it is up close. And this is like a lacy shell pattern. It's about the easiest I could describe it as. It's a lacy shell pattern, and then you have um, like a, um, a gusset on the side here. To make it uh, to make it flare out, parts of me need more flaring than others, um, but we won't go there. But anyway, that's what I'm working on with this and how far I have gotten. And again, that is the seashell capelet. And then I have two more knitting projects that I've got going on. This one I tend this one and my um, the capelet and my scrappy blanket I tend to do during meetings because I don't have to watch what I'm doing there's I don't need a pattern for them at this point so this one I've gotten quite a bit done because I had a two almost two and a half hour meeting so it goes from here and I've done up to here so I've done about two inches and here's what it looks like so far I really am liking the colors and the funny thing is I'm looking at this I have a skirt in every single one of these colors, and I have pants in most of these colors, too. I have a skirt and pants in this color, a skirt and pants in this color, a skirt in, like, an olive green color, which is more this color, but it'll go with either. And then I have a skirt in this light tan, and, again, the dark gray. So, anyway, I've... I'm going to be able to wear this with a lot of stuff. So, um, yeah, the colors, and this is extremely soft. This was yarn I got from Hobium, and it is, there's a lot of yarn on each of these skeins. I've got two skeins, and I think there's over 500 yards. You can see I'm working through the center here. It's pulling from the center out. It's really, really soft, and it's sparkly. There you can see some sparkles because, you know, we got a sparkle. And I don't know how well it shows up in this. Yeah, there you can see it. So, um, yeah. So I'm gonna like this, and it's a nice lightweight, so it's gonna be, it's gonna be comfortable to wear in the summertime because it's, it's not a dense, uh, it's not a dense yarn at all, so it's gonna be very comfortable. And then I've also done quite a bit on my Yarn Advent um, cowl. Now, this is a pattern I'm designing, and last week, I was here. I had done one, two, three, four, five, six, and I've now done one, two, three, four, five, six more. So, I've done 12. I'm, I am actually halfway through the cowl at this point. And I'll hold this up close so you can see the patterns a little bit. It goes from here, which is kind of an eyelet. Oop. It starts here, which is an eyelet. And then there's this pattern here, which looks this way on this side. But when you look at the back, it reminds me almost of crochet. It looks like double. It looks like double crochet. Uh, then there's this one here, which is a textured kind of a bobble stitch. And then there's this one, which is called bamboo. And then, of course, it repeats itself. So it's a series of four different patterns that you just keep repeating. And you can do this with whatever amount of yarn you have that is divisible by um, 24. So, you know, you could do this with three skeins of yarn and just repeat it eight times. No. Yeah. I repeat the pattern eight times. Um, or you could use um, two skeins and you would be repeating it 12 times. You know, you get the picture. Anyway, um, or you could do it all with one color and just have all these different textures in it. So this is going to be an infinity scarf or infinity cowl. So 
this is what it looks like wrapped twice or wrapped once around my neck and then it's going to be twice this size so it'll wrap around my neck twice comfortably or if I choose to strangle myself I could make it across three times but we're not going to do that so um and it is really soft so I'm really excited to get this finished so halfway done with that now before I do our show and tell this week I did want to share a congratulations to Yoka uh, because she actually, she did these little patches, and you'll see them in show and tell. And they're like knitted squares about this size. And then you overstitch on top of them by like weaving through, and they make these really pretty designs. And she did some a while back in blue and white. Because she and I were talking, I said they remind me of Delft tiles, you know, the blue and white tiles. And uh, she's done some in some other colors too. But she got this uh, pattern from the podcast Arnie and Carlos. Well, she made this bag, which you will see in, in the, um, uh, the, the show and tell section. And Arnie and Carlos, she sent, I guess, picture, finished pictures of what she had done. And so they actually talked about and showed her project on their video. So, so kudos to Yoka. Very good. So, um, yeah, it's always exciting when we see people in our, in our bunch you know, get promoted by other people. So, and she also has a, a blog. So uh, if you want to go over on the Facebook channel, you can click to it and you can check out her blog. And it tells a little bit more about what happened, um, how it how it came about and everything, and her other projects. It is in uh, Dutch. However, you can click the translate button in the top right corner and it will translate into English or whatever language. So you can understand what she's saying. But it's very interesting, and she, she talks about some of this. So check out her blog. And also, uh, Sarah Oliver has been doing a daily lockdown. She lives up in uh, Scotland. Uh, if you remember, we did our knitting and uh, crochet uh, holiday along. She and I did that together over the, um, over the fall and into Christmas. Uh, yeah, over the fall. We ended the end of the year where we were trying to finish all of our Christmas. It's been a while. Can you tell? And um, yeah, so anyway, she is the one that partnered with me with the holiday along. She is doing a daily vlog during this whole situation that's going on right now. So um, yeah, so it's fun to watch. I've been keeping track every day of what's been going on with her. So that's been fun. You can check that out as well. So now, after having said all that, I'm going to share the show and tell with you guys.
Now, acquisitions this week. I did get something, and then I sent it back. Um, if you remember, a while back, I ordered 109 yards of elastic with the intention of making the face masks with them. And it kept getting delayed and delayed and delayed. And by the time it came in this week, I'm finished making the masks. I'm out of the rest of the supplies. I do not need 109 yards of elastic hanging around the house. The only purpose I could think of is if I decide to use it, braid it together, and bungee jump. That's not going to happen. Katrina does not bungee jump and turn herself into a human yo-yo. Yeah, not going to happen. So anyway, um, I sent it back. So I don't have it to show you. There wasn't much to see. But nobody needs 109 yards of elastic. So. Um, I certainly don't. I'm never going to make anything that's going to need that much elastic. So, yeah, it went back to where it came from. So, um, yeah, that's my acquisitions or lack thereof this week. Now it's time for... Now, in our Come and Get It section this week, we have... I'm showing some things I don't normally show. Usually it's all strictly yarn related. But this week I thought I'd do something a little bit different. So Annie's has these cute little mugs. It just happened to pop up on their page. I was like, oh, isn't that adorable? So I'm going to insert a picture of it. But I thought it was kind of cute because the handle to hold it is actually looks like the handle of scissors. So I just thought it was adorable. And then they also have, um, oh, and the, the mugs are $9.99. And then they have a sewing machine organizing pad, which I thought was really, really clever. I mean, I guess you could adapt it for knitting or crochet projects or kind of anything projects. You could stick your remote controls for your TV in them. Um, but, yeah, I guess they would work on a smaller scale. You could drape them over the arm of your chair with the pockets in them for your remote and anything else you want, like Kleenex or, you know, whatever you want to put in there, or if you're knitting or crocheting, you know, some of your supplies or your notions bag and your scissors and stuff. But anyway, it's, it's intended to be a mat that goes underneath your sewing machine, and it has pockets along the bottom for you to store, like, your pins and your scissors and, you know, the stuff you need all the time while you're doing, but you don't want them all over the table getting in the way of what you're doing. So anyway, they are selling a pattern for that. It runs between $6.99 and $7.99, depending on if you get a printed pattern or digital uh, pattern. So um, I will show you a picture of what it looks like. So I thought it was kind of clever. And like I said, if you if you cut it down a little bit in size, it would be great to drape over the arm of your you know, sofa chair, you know, the arm of whatever you happen to sit on. And, uh, you know, put your put your knitting and crochet supplies in it. So just an idea. So that is Annie's. And then Blueprint is running a sale. I sent an, uh, a little quick video out yesterday, which was Friday the 8th. And I sent that out because I wasn't sure how long it's going to last. It said it was running till Saturday, which is today. But I don't know if it's running till the end of Saturday or if it was ending before Saturday. So I'm not sure if that sale is still running. I tried to get some details, couldn't get any. But um, if the sale is still running, it is 50% off site-wide, off of their kits and supplies. That's a really, really good sale. Uh, and the thing about it as well is it's 50% it's off of the original price of an item. So. Um, if you're looking, I used the example, if you were if you were looking at yarn that was normally $10 a skein and it's been marked down to $8 a skein, it's not 50% off of that $8, it's 50% off of the $10. So it's still going to be cheaper than the $8 it's currently at. It would be $5. So I hope that makes sense. Um, but anyway, if it is, if the, if the coupon is still working and the sale is still going, you do need a coupon code called My Next Project. And you put that in at the checkout, and that will take the discount off for you. Now, Consumer Crafts, is they have a crochet book. It is $9, and it is called Month by Month Dishcloths. 
Now, I thought that was kind of cute and a neat idea because you could, it doesn't take that long to make a dishcloth, but you could make one once a month and have one that's holiday themed. So, you know, when it's Christmas or winter or whatever, they have it themed for that particular month. So I kind of thought that was a neat idea. And that is called month by month dishcloth. And if you want to make them, you can also get the cheapest cotton out there uh, through them. It's $1.97, which is, I've said it before, about cheaper than any place else I've been able to find Lily Sugar and Cream. So it is always normally $1.97. Dollar Tree has yarn again. Yay! Um, and they actually, I spoke too soon on the Lily Sugar and Cream at Consumer Crafts because... Dollar Tree, the yarn that they have right now is Premier Cotton. It's a dollar a skein, and you have to buy it in a case of three. So $3, you get three skeins of yarn. That's even cheaper than Consumer Crafts at this point. And they have a ton of different colors out there. Um, I went over and looked. That seems to be the only yarn that they're advertising right now. And all of it, you only have to buy three skeins. So that is super. And if you have a Dollar Tree near you, you can save the shipping cost and actually have it shipped to the store and then go in and pick it up. If you have dishcloths in your future, that's the way to go. So uh, again, that is Dollar Tree. Knit Crate is still offering their regular um, offer of you can try your first box for $5. And if you like it, it continues at $24.99 a month. If you decide not to continue, make sure you discontinue before the first of the month, um, but you could get your first box for $5 to try it. And this month should be exciting when it comes in. This is the month for June, or no, for May, May's box. Yes, um, I forget what month it is at this point. Uh, May's box is going to be dye your own yarn. So they're going to send you undyed yarn and then they are going to show you the techniques to dye with Kool-Aid. And they're going to send you the Kool-Aid to do it as well. So that will be fun. And yes, I will be filming the, the dyeing process so we can all watch. In fact, I'm going to cut my yarn into mini skeins so that I can have a lot more yarn to play with and to practice dyeing with. So, um, I have done Kool-Aid dyeing before and food coloring dyeing. Um, in fact, there's some yarn that I've dyed that's available in my Etsy shop. Self-promotion plug there. But anyway, um, yeah, so anyway, there is, there is, um, that's what Knit Crate's going to be this month. Over at Knit Picks, they are running a special, it's called Sweet Sweater Savings. The, you, they are offering 10% off 10 or more skeins, like if you're making a sweater. It looks like most of the yarn that is in this deal is cotton or a cotton blend of some kind. You just click on the link. It'll take you over to the page. You know, when you see the page pop up, just click on the sweet sweater, sweet sweater savings, and it'll show you what yarns are available. Anyway, you can get 10% off if you order 10 or more skeins. You do need to use the coupon code SWEATER10 to get that discount. Now, here's some of the other things. This I told you I was going to show you things that were a little different, and then all I did was talk about yarn. But now I'm getting into a couple of them. Um, I thought I would talk about Leisure Arts, which is where I got one of my diamond art. Uh, not all of them, but one of them, and one I bought, no, two of them. One I bought for myself, one I bought for my mother, um, I got from Leisure Arts. So I thought I would show, they, they actually sell um, the diamond art. And they start, the beginner patterns start at $12.99, and I thought I would show you a picture of what each of them look like. Um, there's lots more to choose from, but I just picked out ones I thought were pretty for each category. So here's the beginner, one of the beginner ones, and they start at $12.99. And then the intermediate is $17.99. And the uh, experienced or advanced portion or advanced one is twenty four ninety nine. Now I think the difference in price, the one I made was an intermediate. I think the difference is in price is because you probably have more colors that have to go into the pattern, uh, so it involves more beads, and that's probably why the difference in price. Plus, it's a little more difficult of a pattern from beginner to the advanced. 
Um, I played it safe the first time I tried it when I ordered from Leisure Arts. I ordered from the Intermediate just because I didn't know what I was getting into and how hard it would be, but it's not hard at all. It's a lot of fun. Uh, so anyway, that is Leisure Arts. And then over at Lion Brand, they ran a sale earlier this week, and I totally missed it. They had a sale on their Flicka yarn. Um, yeah, it was like four skeins for $10. I missed that. Somehow, I missed that. So I'm sorry for that. I didn't find it till the day after the sale. I checked my email, and somehow I missed the sale. So anyway, um, but they are right now having... No real sales going on, but they're just having, you know, cotton sweaters and things like that that are in their collection. So I picked out one that I thought was pretty. It is a kit. It's called the Sweet Pea Top Kit. It's $17.99, and because it's a kit, that means you get the pattern and the yarn to make the pattern with. So, you know, that's not bad. You'd pay that much for a sweater in a store, and this way you can pick the colors and everything yourself. And knit it yourself and walk around and go, I made that. So, um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, that is the Sweet Pea Top Kit. It's so funny because when I saw the title, I used to call my son Sweet Pea. I have no clue why, but I used to jokingly call him Sweet Pea. And then I said it one time in front of somebody. He was totally mortified. <laughs> He was a teenager at the time. It was not appreciated. I thought it was funny. He did not. Anyway, um, yeah. <laughs> so in my shop update, um, I showed you guys some project uh, project bags I had made a while back. And there's a couple left. Some of them have sold, but there are a few left over there if you're interested. There's also some of that dyed yarn that I was talking about. Uh, so that's in my Etsy shop, and the link is down below if you want to go check it out. Now this week, I have a ton of videos coming up. Uh, Monday, there will be a video, not here on YouTube, not here on YouTube, but if you go on the Facebook page, the link will be there to the library's YouTube page. Because I'm making videos for them right now as well, I, I can't put it on my channel. Um, I can't load it to here. I guess I could load it to here, but it would be a little redundant because it's a two it's a tour of my craft cave which you guys have seen before but if you so desire to see it again uh, that will be on Monday but you just get the link through Facebook to go check it out and uh, so that is Monday's video like I said not on this channel over on the Facebook which will take you to the library's channel and then uh, Wednesday I'm hoping my lion brand order comes in uh, a while back, if you remember, there was a nice little yacht lion, yeah, yeah, there was a nice little lion brand sale that went on, and it was um, just my stripe. I'm sitting there doing this like I'm rolling a ball of yarn. I don't know what that was all about, but anyway, there is a a. I bought twelve balls of just my stripe yarn in order to make Christmas or hats for all my grandchildren for Christmas. And so that, I got a notification, should be in on Monday. So hopefully it does. And if it is, that will be the Wednesday video. And a thank you all for to last week's video that gave me questions. I appreciate that. So I could, could make that video because I was at a total loss what I was going to film about. So um, that worked out well. But anyway, this Wednesday should be Lion Brand unboxing, unless it doesn't arrive, and then we'll back up and punt and try to figure something else out. And then Thursday is my regular Cyber Fiber vlog that I've been doing. Uh, if you saw last week's, if you didn't and you want to watch the rest of them, you can click the little link over here, this little eye, and that will take you over there. Um, I'm getting ready to paint my bathroom, and I'm hoping to get started on it on Monday. We'll see. We'll see. So anyway, uh, today we are running around delivering. I delivered flowers to my mother on Thursday for Mother's Day because I was in the town where she lives. And so I ran them up to her and knocked on her door. I felt like the child that locks on their door and runs, you know, like playing tricks or something because there I stuck her flowers and her card. And then I backed up, rang her doorbell and then backed up. And it was so hard not to give my mom a hug on month for Mother's Day. So, yeah, this too will pass. 
But anyway, we are going to be, as you're watching this, we're going to run stuff down to Dave's mom as well. Um, so we will be doing that on, well, while you're watching this, we will be doing that, running down flowers to her, knocking the door, standing back and waving at a distance. So, um, yes. Oh, well. Anyway, but we do want to have something for them on Mother's Day. So that's what we're going to be doing. And you can tune in on Thursday to see what else I've been up. Well, not yet, but I will be up to at that point by Thursday. And hopefully I'll get that bathroom done and I can show you the finished product. If I don't fall off the ladder or some other kind of chaos ensues, you never know with me. So thank you all for watching. And I will see you again several times this week. We'll just say it that way. <laughs> so thanks again for watching. Stay safe, everyone. Happy Mother's Day.